Why is it I'm always running away in my videos? Hey everyone, my name is Mark, and in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to fake some handheld camera movements in your static shots using Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Well, mostly After Effects. I'm also gonna show you how to add a little digital camera zoom to spice things up even more. It's really easy and when used appropriately, can be quite effective. Of course, it's not as good as the real thing, but in a pinch, it can be a great technique. Now, the first thing you need to do is choose your shots. We'll start with this one. Camera on sticks, SH1 shooting in V-Lock. Actually, let's put some color on that. That's better. Now, before I go ahead, I'm going to duplicate this clip and I'll explain why later. And you don't have to do this, but I prefer it. So to duplicate it, hold down the option key and just lift the clip you want to modify above the existing clip in your timeline. Now, this top clip is the one I'm gonna put the camera movement on. Now, from here, I'm going to right click the clip and click replace with After Effects composition. This will open up the clip in After Effects automatically. And from here, what we do to the clip will impact the clip in Premiere. Now, the next thing I wanna do in After Effects is click on the clip and hit P to drop down the position expression. Then you want to hold down Alt or Option and click on the stopwatch. Now, to get the handheld look, we're going to punch in a little formula. Simply type wiggle, open parentheses, and then you can put two numbers separated by a comma. The first number, say one, is the amount of times the wiggle is executed in a second. So one would be one wiggle per second, two would be two wiggles per second, etc. The second number is the number of pixels that will be wiggled in any direction. Now, I personally found a good handheld combo in this situation to be one wiggle per second with 35 pixels in any direction. So I would simply write it like this, and you can see how that impacts the video. Now, just as an example, let's say I wanted to make this two and 35, or maybe one and 65. Both are a little too extreme for this case, so I'm going to keep this at one and 35 right now. Now, I can Alt-Tab back over into Premiere, and you'll see a uniquely colored video clip here, which is linking back to the composition in After Effects. Now, because the image is being digitally manipulated, we're gonna see the edge of the frame here as we're stretching beyond the resolution of the shot with the wiggle. Now to fix this, you can simply increase the scale of the video from 100 to say 109% in Premiere Pro. Just make sure the edges of your frame are scaled out. Now, once you're happy with your work, you can render this file out by right-clicking on the clip and selecting the option Render and Replace. This will render out the composition in After Effects and replace it in Premiere automatically. Now, the reason I duplicate the original clip is if I want to go back to how it was for some reason, I can do that easily enough. Now, you can always right click and restore unrendered if you want, but I prefer to always have my backup in my sequence just in case. I'm a bit of a timeline stacker, it's, it's a problem. Now for this next shot, I wanna do the same thing with the wiggle, but I also wanna add a camera zoom. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate the clip, holding option and lifting it above the original clip, then right click and replace with After Effects composition. Now once in After Effects, I'm going to apply the wiggle. Then I'm going to add a new camera so I can get a zoom in effect going on here. Now to do that, click on layer, new camera. Now, I'm just gonna keep these camera options on default for this example. Now, first thing you'll need to do here is click on the 3D enable option if it's not already turned on so that your camera movements will impact your image or footage in the timeline here. So if you drop down your camera transform option here and go to camera options, you'll see the zoom function here. And that's what we're going to keyframe to get the digital zoom. I'll put my first keyframe by clicking the stopwatch and then go to where I want my zoom to end. Oh, now I want something that feels somewhat organic, so I'm not gonna crash zoom or anything, just a subtle zoom as if I were pulling the zoom myself. So I'll add a new keyframe and slide the pixel position to the right, which will act as the camera zoom position. Now keep in mind, this is simply doing a digital push on the image, so I wouldn't recommend going in too far unless you're shooting in a much higher resolution than you're finishing in, otherwise, your image may start to fall apart. 
pixels. Once that's done, the next thing I want to do is make the beginning and the end of the zoom feel a bit more organic. Right now, it just kind of starts and stops without any acceleration and it feels unnatural. So to quickly change that, I'm going to right click on the first keyframe, go to keyframe assist, and then click ease out. Now this will add a little ramp up to the zoom so it feels a bit more natural. Now heading over to the out keyframe, I'm going to do the same thing. Right click, keyframe assist, and ease in. Now, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go back into the Premiere project, right click on the clip and render and replace, and we're good. After Effects will render it out and you've got your new modified clip in your sequence. Now, that's pretty much it. How you use it and when you use it is obviously up to you. Now, I do find subtle movements is the best way to use this technique. And of course, I'd much prefer to capture all these elements in camera, but these are the sacrifices we must make when we're recording ourselves in these sequences. It also works great if you want to add VFX into your sequence because a static frame makes motion tracking in post much easier. But I'll save that for a whole different video. All right, well, this concludes this video. Hope it helps you on some level. Definitely part of some new content I want to bring to this channel in addition to the vintage lens stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.